guys what's up my fellow youtubers how's it going everybody so I want to share a story okay so we got this little guy Ozzy for Pazzy Ozzy for short at eight weeks old and then, you know, there's three rounds of immunization. And he was so hyper. It was a lot of work. I had to stay home with him. Um, on the weekends, I had to rush home from work at lunch break and walk him, let him go pee. I had to keep him in a crate. Otherwise, he would, like, literally chew the legs off tables and couches and chew up remote controls. But it was all worth it. But, um... So that's kind of where I was for three months, kind of just locked down with this little crazy puppy. But then at, um, you know, four and a half months, he gets the third round of immunization. And my kids were eight, eight and nine at the time. So I tell them, hey, you guys, let's go backpacking. Because I used to take them backpacking a lot. Even at that age, they had their own backpacks and whatnot. And they were like, where? I said, let's go. I know this great little spot up in Ojai. And they're like, how far is it? <laughs> because um, I'd taken them on some, some uh, well, in their minds where it was too far. It's like, it's only um, about 2.5 miles from the car to the campsite. And it's our own campsite. No one goes to the spot. It's right by a, a creek. It's under a big oak tree, a couple big oak trees. Ohio, Ohio mountains are really gorgeous. So they're like, oh, okay, that's doable. Just two and a half miles. And, you know, it's just one tent. So all they're really carrying in their backpack is, you know, maybe some, some uh, energy bars and their sleeping bag, basically, pillow. And uh, so we go. And we get there around like 12, 1230, park the car and head on up. The hike goes uh, real fine. Ozzy's just, you know, in cloud nine. So having so much fun going uh, through, um, you know, a nature area like that. But he did some funny antics too. Like he jumped like three or four feet onto like this skinny branch he thought it was going to hold. And it's right by the creek. And it completely collapsed and he fell in the water. <laughs> My kids really found that one funny. Um, so we get to the campground, we set stuff up. You know, that, that, that takes a good 45 minutes or an hour. And then um, we get the fire going and now it's like dusk time. And everything's done, all the fires, the firewood's uh, collected, the fire's going, the campground's set up. And then we're standing um, a little bit of a ways from the tent and the fire and by a big um, bunch of like piled up of pieces of wood, um, but like, you know, branches and leaves and stuff. And we're talking in a triangle all facing each other, the three of us standing. And then Ozzy's over by the, kind of the wood pile. We're not really looking at him or paying attention to him though. And we hear him let out a loud uh, squelch, squeak. And so we turn at him and he has his face kind of scrunched up and he's just kind of looks down at the ground. He looks like really offended and or in pain. And he just kind of goes over, walks away from us and then sits down by the trees and um, keeps that kind of weird look on his face like he's in pain or something. So we see that and then we look over where he was and there's a baby rattlesnake like maybe this big. And you, I'm sure most of you know, when they're babies, they release much more venom than the adults because they don't know um, how much to release and they don't know they don't have to re release all of their venom. So I, I look over to Ozzy quickly and I just see one little hole in his nose. And so I'm like, you know, should I actually cut it, connects into it like the cowboys in the movies and then try to suck it out? Or should I just try to suck it out? So I didn't know what I was doing, so I, I just tried to suck it out. I didn't feel competent enough to lay right into him with a hot blade. Um, 
And of course, no fluid came out. And he, he got really offended. He yelped and looked at me like, how dare you do that? That caused me so much pain. Um, so we start running to the car. We leave the fire going, the tent up, everything. And I said, we have like 35 minutes, you guys, to try to get to the veterinarian's office and they get, this, get some treatment. And it's at least 30 minutes down the mountain, or if not more. So we gotta run to the car because there's no way we can make it to the car. So we have five minute window to make it to the car. Let's go. There's no way we're gonna make it in that time. So I pick up Ozzy, he's like, you know, 35 pounds. And I start running and my two kids are now crying behind me, trying to keep up. Whew. I'm getting a little bit emotional because I had to um, give the words of encouragement to them, you know, because if one of them drops behind, I can't run back and pick them up, you know, I'm carrying this 35 pound dog. Um, so I'm like being really kind, but also we, we gotta make it, you guys. It's a life, it really is. I don't wanna scare you, but it's a life or death situation. And we have to get to the car as fast as possible. So keep moving those feet, keep picking them up. And I'm my arms are starting to get really heavy, but I'm not complaining, I'm trying to be positive. So we get to the car, put the dog in the back, one kid's in the back with the dog, comfort, trying to comfort the dogs, the dog and uh, one of my children gets in front and we take off. It's just a two lane highway. So there's one uh, direction, one lane for each direction. Only about five minutes into the drive, I look back at this guy and his head is already swelling up. I mean, noticeably swelling the face, the whole head. And so that scares me. So anytime I came up on a car that was doing the speed limit, like 45, and I'm doing like 70, 80 plus, I would I would go on to the oncoming lane of traffic, um, you know, because, you know, it's in the mountains, it's usually available. Um, but every now and then, you know, it's not. And I'd have to kind of make a close call. And, um, so anyways, it's like that all the way down the mountain. And we pull into, there's like a, a human hospital about um, maybe 10 minutes before the veterinary hospital. It's already been, you know, over 35 minutes. So I go in and I say to the, I run in with um, my kids to the human hospital. I say, can you guys treat um, a rattlesnake bite on a dog? You know, and they said, no. I was like, please, please. You know, he's, he's only got a few minutes to still stay alive. No. The veterinary office is just 10 minutes down the road. So I was like, okay, so we run back in the car, we jump in the car, we get going again, driving like crazy. Like there's the vet office, you guys. And then I'm like, and there's an officer, a uh, sheriff with his sirens on. So I just go right by this sheriff without looking at him. Of course he pulls right behind me. And um, it's like only maybe 30 yards when he gets behind me or maybe 50 yards from the um, from the vet. So I just kind of ignore him and let him follow me with the sirens on for that little bit, pull into the parking spot really fast, pull as close as I can up to the front door. And then, um, you know, and as I get out of the car, the cops pulling in kind of fast in the driveway with the sirens on. And I just grab the dog and start to run past the front of my car over towards the, the front door of the veterinarian's office. And I look and the guy in the, the like green swabs like um, the nurses wear is reaching up and locking both locks on the door. And, and then I look over to my right and the officer is dropping to one knee. His gun is unsleeved and he's right uh, aiming at me and dropping to one knee saying freeze. And I, I kept running. And I, I know there was only like another 10 or 15 feet. I started uh, banging, no, just like maybe five or 10 feet, started banging on that glass door because the guy started walking away. And I said, rattlesnake bite. And he literally took two big steps, the door unlocked both locks rapidly and just took the, ripped the dog out of my arms without saying anything and went directly behind this curtain into like the back office. And immediately I heard my dog let out a big yelp. And then I turned to see the police officer like, now I gotta deal with this guy. 
Eddie's putting the gun back in his sleeve, you know, standing up straight and walking towards me. And he's like, um, do you understand three different residents pulled over just to call and complain about an orange Honda element driving like a bat out of hell on this highway? And I was like, no officer, of course I have no idea that, that happened. You know, try to be respectful, as respectful as possible. And he's like, now tell me, I'm gonna give you one chance to tell me what the hell's going on. He said, well, we saw me just, you know, yell rattlesnake and hand my dog over and my dog's yelping right now, you can hear him. Cause um, he got bit by the rattlesnake and this is a little puppy. We've only had him three months. My kids are totally head over heels in love. And I wasn't gonna uh, let him die. So the officer um, said, you know, I have every right to take you in and throw the book at you. And I'm just like, by all means, you know, do whatever you gotta do. You get a little bit emotional. Uh, do whatever you gotta do, you know, I understand. And so um, he's like, no, I'm not gonna do that. But I'm gonna give you a severe warning that next time a, a sheriff officer gets behind your vehicle, you pull over. Yes, sir. So he just leaves. Now the next part of the story is almost as traumatic. They tell me how much it's gonna cost. And it was more than we paid for the dog. You know, he's a pure breed. And um, cause we paid um, 1200 and change and this was 13 and change. So just had to pay it. Luckily I still had some, um, I, had, I used to get tax returns back then because the kids were young and I was able to claim one child. Um, so, you know, I was able to use a credit card knowing that I'd be able to cover it. Um, we got the dog back that night and I said, he's gonna make it. And the doctor says, most likely, but I can't guarantee it. Um, we put the water packs in his shoulder. They pump up the shoulders with hydration water. That's really, because one of the main problems with the rattlesnake bite is dehydration for some reason. So they're really gonna load the water uh, on the haunches, like on the sh upper part of the shoulder blades, they pump in a lot of water. I don't know how it, how it works. And then also the most expensive part obviously is anti-venom. That was the majority of the cost and whatever little fees they throw in there. So he did that. He said he's got it, uh, you know, I'd say better than a 50-50 chance, but I, I can't guarantee anything. He's gonna have a, um, a real painful night. He's gonna be in pain, but we gave him some pain, pain medication. We recommend you go buy this for pain. Um, you know, try to see if you can feed him. So that's exactly what we did. We had to find a hotel room. Now, all the stuff is still up on the mountain and finding a hotel room in Ojai is really hard. It was the weekend. So we found a hotel room, put my daughter in there with the dog, took my son up to the mountain to get the gear. So we get up there and these like, maybe four like, you know, 18, 19 year olds have taken down our tent and totally we had everything set up and took and all of our stuff and put everything in a pile over by the tent. And it's only been like maybe three and a half, four hours. And so we were like, hi. And they're like, oh, is this your stuff? It's like, it's our campground too, you know? And they were like, oh, we didn't see anyone. So we loaded everything up for you. Like, wow, never heard of privacy? No. And we're like, well, we do have to go anyway. So no foul, no harm done, I guess. So we pack everything up, we go back down. And then um, that whole night, we, I, I, my kids slept, obviously they're really young, eight, nine, but um, I was up with my dog all night with him flinging his claws into my chest and just staring at me eye to eye. He ha could hardly breathe. His tongue couldn't fit in his mouth. He had to let it hang out out of the mouth the whole time because the whole upper part of the mouth was all flooded with swollenness. His whole head was still like the elephant man or something. And he just needed that body to body contact and that eye contact. But before the kids fell asleep, it was kind of funny because 
we would put um, the wet dog food in a can in a bowl and he wouldn't eat it we would offer it to him straight from the spoon he wouldn't eat it but if we plopped a little bit on the bedspread he would eat it <laughs> so we were plopping dog, wet dog food on the bedspread in the hotel room so he would eat, eat the food you know he only had like three little bits but it was enough to at least put some um, protein in the system and then the kids fall asleep I go through that whole night with him and then it's morning time and kids are waking up and I say okay I'm gonna take the dog out to go pee I take him out there he sniffs around and goes pee a little bit and that was kind of a good sign we made it through the night and he's walking around he's going pee and then he starts pulling me over towards the swimming pool literally this little tiny five-month-old puppy and I was like okay so he pulls me right to the gate I open the gate we go in the swimming pool and he goes right down the steps into the water so I undo his leash and he actually started swimming laps and I'm like He's going to make it. Yay. So that was um, a little bit of a sad story there with a happy ending, though. And it's a testament to, like, you know, a family kind of pulling together and having a little bit of trauma together <laughs> and coming through it. So hope you enjoyed that story. Talk to you guys later.